This is an introduction to creating YouTube animations by writing code in Python. It's going to show what can be achieved and to show this in action this entire video has been created using Python code and the PGZ animation library. I've mentioned this library before but it was part of another video on creating animations whereas this is going to provide a proper introduction to that library. The library PGZ animation is one I'm creating myself. I found it useful but it's not particularly easy to use and I'm looking at ways to make it easier. I found the library invaluable for some of my videos but if you want to get started at the moment you'd have to spend some time understanding how it works and how to create the code. Here you can see a demonstration of what could be achieved. This is showing an animated space battle. As we go through this video, I'm going to be showing other examples. If you think any of these would be useful, please give this video a like. Click on that thumbs up icon. It really helps with letting people know about my video. Before I get ahead of myself, here are some of the things I'll be looking at. Why I created PGZ animation. What is PGZ animation? How to use PGZ animation. And then what's the future? and then I'll also be finishing with some examples. You can skip to these as these will be marked as chapters on the YouTube video. While I'm explaining this I'll be showing some of the features through various clips and I'll also have more examples at the end. As I said before all this is created using my library. It is possible to create bullet point slides shows and it can be used to create animations for an RGB matrix display. So why did I create PGZ animation? I wanted a tool that I could use to help create animations for YouTube. Both full screen video animations and some that could be used as an overlay such as my YouTube subscribe animation. Which is a good time to remind you to subscribe and hit that like button to help with the YouTube algorithm. There are a variety of different tools I could have used, some commercial and some open source. I didn't want to pay for a commercial license because the small amount of ad revenue I do get from YouTube is used for buying the hardware used in demos and used in creating the content. I don't get enough to cover any kind of subscription or software license for animation tools. There are some free animation tools, some particularly good ones including Synfig Studio and Blender, but they take a lot of time to create the kind of animations I wanted. Also, some of the animations I wanted to create are particularly suited to code. The main example being this circuit demonstration. So one reason I was looking at generating animations using code is that I thought it would make it easier for these particular types of videos. And this video is used for creating electronic circuit demonstration video, which is used on my Learn Electronics pages on penguintutor.com. I've put a link in the description to the first of these videos. I'll be adding some more in future. I've explained why, but what exactly is PGZ animation? Well, as I've hinted already, it's a way of creating animations using programming code. It's written in Python and designed to be accessible as possible. It relies heavily on Pygame Zero, also using some of the features from Pygame as well. So where Pygame Zero does not have a particular feature that I required, then I've used the native Pygame feature instead. The library is a collection of class objects representing different objects that you may want to animate. This includes texts and images known as actors in Pygame Zero, but it also includes basic shapes such as circles, which could be used to say represent bouncing balls, or for more complex shapes, it uses the polygon which can be used to represent any kind of shape. You can see the classes currently available on this slide. I say currently, as I've been extending these as I've found it useful to add more. For example, Anim Bar Display is the most recent, which I'm planning to use in future for animated progress bars or bar graphs. The thing that makes these different from the standard Pygame Zero classes is that they include animate methods. I'll show one example here, which is the move tween method. This method needs to be called once per frame, which is normally done in the Pygame Zero update function. 
The start argument is the frame number for the start of the animation. The end is the last frame number for that animation. And after that, the object will be in the new position. Current is the current frame number. This is normally auto-incremented in the Pygame update function, or another function called by that. And then finally, go to is the new destination coordinates. The advantage to this method over coding yourself is that it will automatically calculate the distance that the animation needs to move over each frame to reach the new position at the right time. Effectively creating the tweens. So how to use it? And this is where the challenge lies. How best to create an animation using code? You could just create all the code manually, but I've created some examples which show you how to create an animation. The thing is these are typically over 100 lines of codes for each one, but most of this is boilerplate code and that doesn't need to change. So when I'm creating an animation, typically I'll copy an existing one and then just make the appropriate changes. You can access all the co example code for this video that I've created here on my website. See the link in the description. But I'll use the YouTube subscribe example to illustrate this of how it works, as this is quite a good example to use. The first line of the code imports the required libraries. In this case, I'm using the anim actor class which is based around the Pygame Zero actor class. You could, of course, import asterisk, but it's usually better practice just to import the classes that you actually need. There are then some settings which set the size of the animation, etc. Note that whilst I normally create videos at HD 1080p, when I'm creating my animations, I usually just use 720p. So that makes it easy to preview on these on a standard screen. If you have a screen with 4K resolution, then you may want to increase that. There are then some options which are used to set how the animation is displayed when previewing it. The next two lines are the save and save underscore files. The save option allows you to turn off saving the files until you're ready. Basically, with it set to false, it's in a preview mode. The save files variable is a location to save the files into. It's usually a good idea to create a different directory for each animation you're creating, which is what I've done here. The file part of this shows it will create a file called animation with five digits representing the frame number as .png files. The background color and background image options can be set, used to set the background. The background image will override the background color. In this case, the color is set to RGB 02550, which is pure green. This makes it easier for me to use the green screen option in my video editor to turn the background transparent. The next block of text that needs to be changed is the shapes dictionary. There is also a shapes group entry, but that's a bit more complicated and it's not needed for simple animations. So this is the shapes information, which creates three objects. Each of these is an anim actor object with the image file specified and the coordinates used mean that they all start off the main screen. So then I can bring them in. The KF dictionary stands for keyframes. This is used to determine the start and stop frames of various elements. It's not needed, but can make your code easy to read and easy to change if you want to change the timings. Instead of having to hard code it, you just make the changes in here and they'll get reflected in the animation. The final block of the code is the animate function. This is where I've put the movement of the three actors. The first entries use the move rel tween method. This is similar to the move tween example I mentioned earlier but is relative to the starting position. This makes it easier if you're trying to determine where to position the images. Or in this particular case, it would be useful if I decided to put the images on the left instead of the right, as I'd only need to change the starting position. The rest of the code shows an example of where code can be used to simplify creating a repeating animation. In this case, it has the bell rotated to create a ringing motion. 
Instead of having this code repeated multiple times, it's been put inside a for loop, which repeats the code. After changing these, then you can run a preview, which you run just using pgz run. Once you're ready to save the video, change the save variable to true, and it will all be exported as individual PNG image files into the directory specified earlier. Once the image files have been created, you can use the following command to convert that into an MP4 video. This uses the FFmpeg multimedia tool, combines the images into a video, and the details of this command are included in the README file for the PGZ animation library. So what's the future? So for me, this has been a really useful tool. I use it on a regular basis to create animations or to add a particular feature to one of my YouTube videos. The problem is it's not very easy to use. But why is that the case? Well, there are a few reasons. One is that it's a compromise between flexibility and ease of use. If you want to be able to create just the slides, then I could create a solution that would make it very easy to create bullet slides. That would be no use for the electronic circuit diagrams that I want to create. And it would limit even the slides, what you could do. You wouldn't be able to add, say, the animated matrix display that I showed on an earlier slide. Another reason is the amount of boilerplate code needed to get started. You don't need to write this code each time. You can just copy one of the existing examples. But having that amount of code inside your program can make it a little bit daunting. There's also the complexity of the different classes. And really this is just a documentation thing. Although I have put a lot of comments into the code itself. But if I compile this into a document with all this information, then it's going to be a huge document to get started. And that's not really going to help anyway. And the thing is, I don't find it immediately intuitive myself on how to create the next animation. And if I find it hard with my familiarity of the way the code works behind the scene, then a new user that isn't so familiar is going to find it even harder. So I've been thinking of ways I can improve this. I'm not sure I've come across the ideal solution yet, but I do have some ideas. The first option is really to leave it as it is. Perhaps create a few different templates, which makes it easy to get started. Or perhaps just add in extra comments to make it clear where you add your own code. And this will always be an option, even if I implement some of the other features. The advantage of this being the flexibility it offers. You can, if you can create it in code, then you can create the animation. But it's just not the most user-friendly approach. My first thought about how to improve it was to take the code away from the user and instead use config files. You put in the text, the image file names and some keyframes and start and end position, and then it does all the hard work in converting that into the animation. The thing is about this is that whilst it should make it a bit easier, it removes some of the flexibility that I wanted to create in code. So it doesn't really fit in with my original aims. Something that would be useful is to hide some of the boilerplate code. A simple animation is about 100 lines long, but about 70% of that is the boilerplate code that exists in all the animations. One of the limitations here is that it relies on Pygame Zero, which already hides even more boilerplate code. So if I do this, then I'll need to create my own executable, which then relies on calling pgz run. Or perhaps I can do it by abstracting the animation into its own class, where you update that class rather than the main Python program. This is something I can look into further, but I'm not quite sure how to achieve this at this stage. Perhaps another alternative is to create mini widget type animations. These would be designed to be used alongside the existing way that the code is written but may be useful if you wanted some simple animation. For example, the YouTube subscribe animation could be created as a widget, or perhaps a status bar which lets you set a custom timer. So what's the future? I don't really know at this stage. As for my own use, then the first method works for me, and it would be easier just to stick with that. But if I can find a way to make it easier, that would increase the appeal, 
and turn it into a tool that more people would want to use. So I'm hoping to see what others think. Do you think any of these would make it more accessible? Or do you have any other suggestions on how you would improve it to make it easy to use? If you have any ideas or suggestions, please put them in the comments. Please give this video a like or share it with others to try and get more input from others. I do know I'll be continuing the first of the options, which is the main code, as that is working for me at the moment. I am open to ideas of what others would find useful, and I would like to add new features that increase that appeal. Here are some examples of some of the animations I've created using PGZ Animation. If you create some videos yourself, then please let me know in the comments. This example shows a waveform of a digital electronic circuit showing a change in the duty cycle. This shows different coloured lights around the world, used in my cheer lights video. This clock is particularly useful for videos where you want to show a passage of time. It's created on a green background, which makes it easier to use the green screen technology in your video editor to remove the background. One of my earlier demos is this game of Pong, all created using basic shapes. Well, here's an example of a space game created using retro 8-bit sprites. You could create much higher resolution examples. These are deliberately retro, but you can use any PNG images for the sprites. This one is a bit different. It's a very low resolution animation. This is designed for my Raspberry Pi matrix display, a 64 by 32 pixel LED display. I created this for the Euro 2020 where England reached the final. But really this is used to illustrate how you could use it for more specific purposes. And finally, this last example demonstrates one of the main reasons for creating this library. This demonstration shows how a MOSFET inverting buffer works. It's quite a bit longer than some of the other examples, but shows how it can be used for creating animated circuit diagrams, which are easier to understand than static images. Thanks for watching. I look forward to seeing you on a future video.